How many of you ever thought of your previous generation would ever had the conversations we're having today? How many even thought when you came here today you'd have the conversations we've had today? Our industry really has changed and not because of us, but because of outside influence in that apartment complex built next to the dairy. That's a great slide. But we've got to realize that that power is on the other side of the fence unless we engage. One thing I really like about the round tables, it allowed us a platform to engage. They didn't mention them. I don't think that there's actually a global round table. And that started this effort and with the global mindset to dictate or try to shape and form how we produce livestock in the United States was almost uh, more than I could bear just thinking about it. So the U.S. Sustainable Roundtable was put together and it really has helped bring some focus to that and really get everybody on the same page. Dr. Frank was, uh, I, I've known him for a long time and as we, back, um, how many of you know what the uh, Initials AOC stand for. <laughs> All right. Back when she was coming out with her new Green Deal, there was only one person that reached out to her, other than calling her crazy, with actual facts and data to back up his conversation. And that was the greenhouse guru that was here earlier. And he had an article that came out about how we have to change our approach to dealing with that kind of anti-beef message. Is we have to go with them, go to them with a good message and, and actually educate them. In a lot of cases, it is misinformation they've had. They're relying on the same sorry news sources the rest of us are. And so without that engagement, we miss the opportunity to have those conversations. How much have you heard about the new Green Deal lately? AOC has not really said much about it since the greenhouse guru talked to her. And she realized how far off base she was in her approach. To her credit, she listened a little bit. I don't think she gave it up completely. And she's probably listening to more people on the other side now. But that's really interesting how if we engage properly, we can change some people's minds. That's not our strong suit, is it? It's not the other side's strong suit. We like to sit back and call one another names and call each other stupid, and most of the time we're not stupid. We just may not be informed with the facts we need to have. Hopefully that's why you're here, trying to learn a little more facts that you can go home. I, I was taking pictures of slides up here. I, used to, you'd sit around and take notes all the time. Now we just take pictures now. So I, I know what he said on the slides anyway, and I've got some information to go, and there's going to be more and more publications and material that we can put out to tell that story, but it's really important. I really enjoyed the presentation uh, that HEB uh, Matt Walton put out. What they do to market our products is amazing. All we've got to do is provide them with that good quality product. And that's where we, we spend a lot of effort trying to do that through quality assurance programs and everything else we talk about, the whole genetics and trying to get things that we present to them that they can sell without reservation. And they have, a, you have notice also, they have a market for about everything we produce. From the prime products, the Wagyu products, all the way down to no roll products, they have an outlet for it. And we just have to produce a safe product for them to sell. That was really good. And looking at how it's changing and somebody wanting to click on a button and have their food prepared for them and put in a dish so they can heat it up in two and a half minutes. And it'd be pretty good. So that's something we've, we've got to think about what other parts of this industry are doing for us as beef cattle producers. And it's not always a big, scary uh, industry that we deal with. I know a lot of people really are into the local side of it, but I guarantee the bulk of the people are still going to go to HEB either digitally or in person and buy their food. So we have to make sure that we're feed, feeding all of our customers, not just one segment of it, and certainly not putting down other segments because they don't do it the way we do it. You know, Mason, Dr. Mason's had a slide. Got off of John Madey out of the Drovers, I believe it was, years ago. 
is a basket full of brown and white eggs. And he said, if your customers want brown eggs, sell them brown eggs, not anti-white eggs. Okay. And we have to continue that mindset in the way we produce beef and realize there's an outlet for all our product. We just have to figure out how to get it to them in the right manner. 